Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Yesterday, you heard about how one AI executive order from the White House had been squashed. Basically, there was a big dust up with congressional Republicans around the White House's plan to create a task force to go after states who put AI regulations on the books. But as it turns out, that was not the only executive order they have planned. President Trump has now officially signed an executive order to launch a national AI science program known as the Genesis Mission. The text of the order argues that the race for global technology dominance in the development of AI requires a historic national effort comparable in urgency and ambition to the Manhattan Project. This order launches the Genesis Mission as a dedicated, coordinated national effort to unleash a new age of AI-accelerated innovation and discovery that can solve the most challenging problems of the century. Michael Kratzios, the director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, continued that tone during the Monday announcement. He described the Genesis mission as the largest marshalling of federal scientific resources since the Apollo program. Now, stripping away the superlatives, the Genesis mission is at core an initiative to collate scientific knowledge from across the government to enable new AI-driven discoveries. Data sets will be gathered from the National Science Foundation, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and the National Institute of Health. The datasets, some of which stretch all the way back to the 1940s, will be cleaned and transformed into machine-readable formats to make them accessible to AI models. The order lays out a twofold goal, to train scientific foundation models and create AI agents to test new hypotheses, automate research workflows, and accelerate scientific breakthroughs. To that end, the Department of Energy and their network of 17 national labs will make their data and compute resources available to research institutions and private sector companies. The order instructs the DOE to, quote, create a closed-loop AI experimentation platform that integrates our nation's world-class supercomputers and unique data assets to generate scientific foundation models and power robotic laboratories. Essentially, this is a major effort to organize the scientific data that's scattered across government agencies and marshal resources in order to drive AI-accelerated scientific discovery. Krasios again said, Since the 1990s, America's scientific edge has faced growing challenges. He cited declining numbers of drug approvals and research outputs despite soaring scientific budgets. The Genesis mission seeks to reverse that trend by, in his words, unifying agencies' scientific efforts and integrating AI as a scientific tool to revolutionize the way science and research are conducted. Datasets and compute infrastructure will be centralized into the American Science and Security Platform to be established by the DOE, who said that once complete, the platform will be, quote, the world's most complex and powerful scientific instrument ever built. It will draw upon the expertise of roughly 40,000 DOE scientists, engineers, and technical staff, alongside private sector innovators to ensure that the United States leads and builds the technologies that will define the future. The DOE is also tasked with formulating a list of 20 science and technology challenges of national importance to form the initial focus of the Genesis mission. This potentially includes domains like advanced manufacturing, biotechnology, critical materials, nuclear fission and fusion energy, quantum information science, and semiconductors. The initiative builds on the existing National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource, or NAIR, which was established in 2020 and brought together federal agencies, including the Department of Defense, NASA, and the National Institutes of Health, with private companies like OpenAI, Google, and Palantir to form a nationwide research community. Lynn Parker, who co-chaired NAIR during the Biden admin, said, Government support for AI research builds the foundations for new breakthroughs and helps keep innovation aligned with the public interest. We take for granted that new products appear regularly, but seldom consider the decades of research that made them possible. Without long-term investment, we risk seeding leadership in the technologies that will define our economy, our security, and our daily lives. Now, speaking of the connection between public and private, Amazon announced on Monday that they will spend up to $50 billion to expand their AI and supercomputing facilities for U.S. government customers. The expansion will begin next year and is expected to add a total of 1.3 gigawatts of AI capacity to the AWS regions that service government demand. The expansion will increase capacity for both unclassified and top-secret AWS servers. Said AWS CEO Matt Garman in a press release, Our investment in purpose-built government AI and cloud infrastructure will fundamentally transform how federal agencies leverage supercomputing. We're giving agencies expanded access to advanced AI capabilities that will enable them to accelerate critical missions, from cybersecurity to drug discovery. This investment removes the technology barriers that have held government back and further positions America to lead in the AI era. Staying on the chip theme, Meta appears to be preparing to use Google's TPUs in their own data centers. The information reports that Google has begun pitching large cloud customers, including Meta and large financial institutions, on installing TPUs at their own facilities. Google has made their custom AI chips available through Google Cloud for years, but they've yet to sell TPUs directly to outside customers. Part of the pitch is that they're able to operate the chips with higher security and compliance standards that aren't possible with cloud use. 
According to sources speaking with the information, Meta is in talks to order billions of dollars worth of TPUs to install in their data centers in 2027. If you've been listening over the last week, what's clear is that while Google has been making TPUs for over a decade, the release of Gemini 3 put the chips firmly on people's radar. The new model was trained exclusively on TPUs, leading many to question whether Google's chips could be a viable alternative to NVIDIA's GPUs. The news seems to have moved the stock market, with Bloomberg reporting a 2.7% bump for Google and a 2.7% drop for NVIDIA in overnight markets. Bloomberg analyst wrote, Meta's likely use of Google's TPUs, which are already used by Anthropic, shows third-party providers of large language models are likely to leverage Google as a secondary supplier of accelerator chips for inferencing in the near term. Now, while Google is clearly ramping up to compete, the analysis is still probably getting a little bit ahead of itself. That said, the new report contained a few more crumbs of information on how Google is looking to address the market for AI chips. One of NVIDIA's biggest moats is the CUDA developer ecosystem. As part of the information report, they write that Google has developed a new software suite called TPU Command Center that's designed to make TPU compatibility more easy to navigate. Ultimately, while it could take Google a number of years to carve out a meaningful share of the AI chip market, NVIDIA is already taking the threat seriously. According to the information, NVIDIA is following the deal-making closely and have enticed Anthropic and OpenAI to make large commitments to NVIDIA GPUs. They also wrote that it's possible that NVIDIA will seek to preempt a deal between Google and Meta. Futurum Equities chief market strategist Shea Boulour writes, I know the first instinct is to frame Meta exploring Google TPUs as the start of NVIDIA's pricing power erosion, but that's not what it is. The real story is the velocity of Meta's AI workload curve, as Llama training cycles, video understanding systems, and tens of billions of daily inference calls all smash into the same compute ceiling. Meta is already on pace to spend $100 billion on NVIDIA hardware, and they're still capacity constrained. Adding CPUs doesn't replace the spend, it just sits on top of it. Even if NVIDIA doubled output, Meta would still be short on compute. That's how steep the structural AI capacity shortage actually is. Lastly today, in an interview at the Emerson Collective's Demo Day, which is the venture and philanthropy fund of Steve Jobs' widow Lorene Powell Jobs, Sam Altman and Johnny Ive said that they've nailed the design of their AI device. In possibly the strangest ever description of a consumer device, Altman said, There was an earlier prototype that we were quite excited about, but I did not have any feeling of, I want to pick up that thing and take a bite out of it. And then finally, we got there all of a sudden. Altman said this was Ive's test for knowing when a design is dialed in, when you want to lick it or take a bite out of it or something like that. The pair stayed silent on features, but Altman was excited to describe the vibes of the product. He compared the experience of modern devices as being like walking through Times Square, flashing lights, noises, and the dopamine drip, constantly just dealing with all the little indignities. By comparison, he wants using the OpenAI device to feel more like sitting in the most beautiful cabin by a lake and in the mountains and just sort of enjoying the peace and calm. I've added his vibe, commenting, I love solutions that teeter on appearing almost naive in their simplicity, and I also love incredibly intelligent, sophisticated products that you want to touch, and you feel no intimidation that you want to use almost carelessly. Altman commented, I hope that when people see it, they say, that's it. The interview added no information on what the device will actually do, but for Altman, the key feature continues to be total contextual awareness. He said, it is so simple, but then AI can just do so much for you that so much can fall away. And the degree to which Johnny has chipped away at every little thing that this doesn't need to do or doesn't need to be in there is remarkable. If you feel more rather than less confused, don't worry about it. Substantively, the biggest news was a timeline, with I've stating the device could be available within two years. But with that, we close today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 